In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Logo Pro software, which is how you will do the FST plotting of sounds. So you should be able to find Logo Pro on the desktop of the computer. So you want to launch that. Um, now, these computers are rather slow, and they're going to be even slower while running a screencast. So you're going to occasionally need to be a little patient. Note that when the software is opened, you see something that says sound pressure arbitrary. The reason that says that is that I already have my microphone plugged in to the uh, mini uh, logger data correction uh, box that's outside the computer. So I'd always recommend that you plug in the microphone before starting the software. So now, if I go ahead and hit collect, it's going to capture a little bit of the sound. And since I'm talking, it's going to collect a little bit of the sound of my voice. So I hit collect, and we see a line. Now, that doesn't seem particularly helpful. So what we might want to do is hit this button, which is the data collection button. And it looks like an x and y axis with a little clock. And when you open that, you can change what the duration is. So let's make this 3 seconds. And that's the only thing you need to do, to say done. So now if you look, the x axis goes from 0, 1, 2, 3. And know that this is time. And again, sound pressure is what we talked about actually making up the sound wave in the air. So now when I hit collect, we're actually going to get three seconds. And that was the sound of my voice. So now, you can't see exactly what's going on. But we could, for instance, try to zoom in a little bit. And by, uh, let's see, never we can select and then say uh, auto scale. And now again, we can see, OK, it's much bigger. We can again select and zoom graph in. And now you can start to see something that looks a little more like clean oscillations. But we can do a little bit better than that, even. I have a tuning fork. Now, I don't actually know where the microphone on the computer is, so I don't know how well you're going to be able to hear this in the video. But after I hit this tuning fork, I'm going to put it very close to the microphone. So I'm going to hit the, mic the tuning fork, and then I'm going to start the collection. Hit the tuning fork. Find my mic. So now, we see that we see something here. And it was quiet at first because I didn't have the tuning fork right next to it. So let's again kind of zoom in on what's happening here. And when I right click, zoom graph in. And now you can see something that's really clearly an oscillating wave. And if I go to the region where the amplitude is a little more constant and zoom graph in again, this now looks like all of these waves that we're talking about. So the next thing that I want to do is actually look at the FST. What we're looking at right now is the sound wave. So I go up to Insert, and I'm going to say Additional Graphs, FST Graph. Now, what's going to help is to resize your sound window and then actually pull up the FFT to take up the top half. So now you can just see both of them. That's the goal. And again, I'm going to hit the uh, tuning fork and try to keep it close to where the microphone was. And so this is now the sound wave. And we can zoom in to really see the individual jiggles. But then this is the exciting thing. Come up and look at this FFT. Now what you see here, this line, is a really, really, really big peak. And so again, I could zoom in on this if I chose. Oh, maybe not. Um, I can go to Graph Options. And in the Graph Options, I can choose what my uh, range will be by saying, for instance, let's try 200 and then to uh, maybe 500. 
Okay, I have no idea why that's not being allowed. Please ignore that. Okay, so now um, we still see that big spike here, and you can see a bunch of littleish spikes. When you hear the tuning fork, there's usually a main tone, and then there's like a very high tone. This is that very high tone. So just to compare, I'm now going to do a, a, a collection where, again, I'm talking, and you can see that there's actually a bunch of stuff going on here. And again, my sound wave looks really complicated when I'm talking. The FST looks really complicated. Instead, I can try singing a note. And I'll try to actually sing the same note as the tuning fork. Uh, uh, and now you can see that these peaks are a bit wider, but I was mostly on one note. Do forgive me, those of you who are much better vocalists than me but you do see these other peaks. So soon we'll be talking about how to interpret all of this, but the main idea is when you want to read the FFT, you want to look for this big peak, and by coming up to this X equals button, and basically putting your mouse over it, you can see where that peak was, and this is telling me that it was at 645 hertz, which is certainly not the note of the tuning fork, which again I can hit, and we can measure that one. And when we come back and try to get what that note was, we see that that was 440. So I didn't do a very good job singing the same note as the tuning fork. So hopefully that gives you the idea. You don't actually have to do anything with this data table off to the left. So the steps basically were plug in the microphone to the box, start the software, and you can change your time recording again with this menu, making it something like three seconds is good, five seconds would be fine, and then hitting collect.